Now there are actually two methods of cell division. Although the majority of cell division happens by mitosis, there is also another one that you need to know about which is called meiosis. Now this diagram shows the main differences between the two types of cell division. They both start with a normal cell which has two sets of chromosomes, a diploid cell which we refer to here as 2N. Uh, and you can see in mitosis that what you do is you produce two identical copies of that cell, both with 2N in, two diploid daughter cells which are identical to the parent cell. But in meiosis we've got a difference here because we don't produce two cells, we produce four cells. And actually what we're doing is we're making haploid cells. They only have one of each pair of chromosomes uh, and therefore they are 1N cells and they are genetically varied, they're all slightly different. As opposed to mitosis where you're making genetically identical cells, in meiosis we're making genetically varied cells and we call these uh, cells gametes. Asexual reproduction is fast, but as already mentioned, it does not create any variation at all. For a, for a species to survive long term, you want the offspring to be varied so that not all of them are vulnerable if the environment changes. To do this, you're going to need to do sexual reproduction. Now, sexual reproduction involves a cell from the male and a cell from the female fusing together in fertilization. Now, if both these cells had diploid um, nucleuses, if they both had full complements of chromosomes, two copies of each, then the new cell, once these two cells fused, would have too many chromosomes. So for example, in a human, if you had a normal human cell with 46 and another normal human cell with 46 fusing, the new cell would have 92 chromosomes. So that's not going to work. So what you need to do is you need to have a way of producing cells that have half the number of chromosomes in them, or haploid cells. So in this case, in humans, you want to make cells that have 23 chromosomes in, which is what we call gametes. And so in humans, you've got sperm and you've got eggs. Now, in order to make these cells, you are going to need to carry out meiosis. So meiosis is similar to mitosis in many ways, but there are some really crucial differences that are going to be explained in this video. First of all, the cell divides twice to make four cells and not just once. You end up with haploid cells and not diploid cells, as already mentioned. Chromosomes, uh, when they line up, which happens in metaphase in mitosis, they line up in one long line. A big difference here in meiosis is that the chromosomes don't all line up in one long line, but they line up in two lines. And they line up in their what we call homologous pairs, which we'll talk a little bit more about uh, in this video later on. Something called independent assortment happens, which again is really, really important, along with something else called crossing over. Again, we're going to be talking about these later on in the video. Now we use the same names to describe the stages of meiosis as we do mitosis, but because there is two uh, lots of cell division happening, we have prophase uh, 1 to, uh, to telophase 1, and then we go prophase 2 to telophase 2. And as you can see here, in the first division, you uh, make two haploid cells, and in the second division, that's when you end up with four haploid cells. Now, before we go through the stages, it's important to realize something about the 46 chromosomes in a normal human cell. You actually have two versions of each type of chromosome, so that they can be arranged into 23 pairs, as shown in this picture here. One of each pair will come from your mother, and the other one will come from your father. Now, this is what we call homologous pairs, the way that we can match them up. Uh, one from your mother and one from your father. This is why a diploid cell is called 2N, because it actually has two versions of each chromosome. Now, in the first division of meiosis, one of each of these pairs needs to end up in each of the daughter cells to make haploid cells. Therefore, you'll have 23 in each. However, these two new cells then need to split again in the second division to make four cells. Now, if we had 23 in each and we split it again, then that doesn't work. Again, we have too little DNA. So just like what happened in mitosis, where we had to duplicate all our DNA before the cell uh, under underwent mitosis, we now need, we need to do the same here. We need to duplicate all the DNA um, and do DNA replication again before the cell goes through meiosis in order to make sure we have enough DNA to end up with four haploid cells. So all those single chromosomes are going to become double X-shaped chromosomes made up of sister chromatids, just as we had in mitosis. 
Then we can enter prophase one. Now in prophase one, the centrioles begin to move to opposite poles. The nucleolus breaks down, followed later by the nuclear envelope, and the duplicated chromosomes are clearly visible with the two sister chromatids joined by the centromere. Now that's just the same as mitosis. However, the differences are that the homologous chromosomes pair up with each other. So chromosome number one will find the other chromosome number one, as it were, and they will go next to each other. And what happens here is a very cool process where they cross over. What this means is that when these homologous pairs of chromosomes line up next to each other, they can actually swap bits of their DNA. Little bits uh, detach and then reattach to the, um, to the other member of the pair. Now they can do this because they're homologous, because they have the same genes on each chromosome. What, they do, what, what is different is that they are different alleles or different versions of that genes. But they can swap around bits of DNA. Now this is really important because it adds lots of genetic variation to the offspring, which is really the main point of meiosis. Then we move into metaphase one, and again, it starts off in the same way as mitosis. The centrioles form the spindle uh, out of these things called microtubules, and they attach to the centromeres um, of the chromosomes. But the difference here is that they're going to attach to the uh, one of each of the homologous pairs because they are lined up in homologous pairs. They're not lined up in one long line now, they're lined up next to the homologous pair. And instead of pulling apart and the centromere breaking, uh, what's going to happen here is the whole homologous pair will go to either end of the cell in anaphase. However, what's another important thing to mention here is the way that they line up in metaphase one, is that they could go either way around. And this is what we call independent assortment, the way that they orientate themselves. Now, if you think of all the different chromosomes uh, lining up and the, the fact that they could do it in each of the two ways, there are lots of different combinations as to how this could happen. And that's why I end up with such good variation in the sperm and the egg. It's not always the same one of each pair, that ends up in each of the different gametes at the end. Right, back to the meiosis stages. The next stage is anaphase one. So the whole double chromosome goes to each opposite pole. What we end up with now is 23 chromosomes in each of the two nuclei that form in telophase one, when the nuclear membranes reform. Um, they are now haploid cells and the cell can divide, so cytokinesis can occur, and we move on to prophase two. Now in prophase two, um, and, and metaphase two, anaphase two, and telophase two, we're basically just gonna repeat exactly what happens in mitosis here, because what we've ended up with here are two cells which have double chromosomes in. There's only 23 of them, but they're double chromosomes with the two chromatids. So we just move through exactly the same process as we did with mitosis now to split these two cells up to make four. So what we end up with is the chromosomes lining up down the middle in metaphase, uh, the centromeres breaking and the two sister chromatids splitting, one going to um, opposite ends of each of the cells. Um, being pulled apart by microtubules using ATP, and finally into telophase where the nuclear envelopes reform and cytokinesis will occur to make our four separate cells. Now, as always, it's important to think about what else could you do to read around this topic and look at extending your knowledge here. What were the results from Messelson and Stahl's experiments? What is the relationship between the cell cycle and apoptosis? What role does the cytoskeleton play in the cell cycle? And how do the many long linear DNA molecules in a eukaryotic nucleus manage to replicate and separate without getting all tangled up?